What's up guys, Malik over at Modern Pond. Tonight we're going to be talking about flank flounder. A lot of you guys out there may specifically target flounder. If you do specifically target flounder, you catch enough of them, you got to clean enough of them that you get pretty familiar with uh, the anatomy of the fish, how to clean them. You, you pick up tips and tricks from other guys. Uh, but a lot of you guys that fish the Gulf don't necessarily target flounder. You might target redfish, you might target trout, you might target black drum, uh, whatever the species is that you may target, uh, a lot of times uh, guys call flounder bonus fish. They, they pick up a flounder by accident. You know, they're fishing shrimp uh, on, a, on, a, on sand pockets and stuff like that looking for, for redfish, trout, whatever it may be, and they pick up a flounder by accident. So they may have a really solid string of fish, redfish, trout, and then all of a sudden a bonus flounder. What do you do with the bonus flounder? A lot of guys don't know how to fillet a flounder because it's different than a trout, it's different than a redfish, it's different than your drum. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a series of three tutorials. I'm gonna do a easy flounder fillet, a intermediate flounder fillet, and a difficult flounder fillet, or an advanced flounder fillet. Uh, there, there's three different ways that we do around here for filleting flounder. We target the species specifically. We catch lots of flounder. Uh, my brother and I, Mark, are, are relatively proficient at catching flounder. We always have flounder in the freezer. and Us, our friends and family all eat quite a bit of flounder uh, due to my brother and I's effort. Uh, so the first one we're going to go over is the easy or the easiest, it's not necessarily easy, it's not necessarily hard, it's just the easiest of the three methods, uh, that method of filleting a flounder. Uh, but before we do that, the, the precursor to all this is a, a quick anatomy on the flounder to understand the fish before we start chopping it up. Okay, okay. First of all, flounder is a flat fish. If you've never seen a flounder before, it is a flat fish. It's an asymmetrical fish that lives on the bottom of the ocean. It uh, basically has a brown side and a white side. So this is the brown side. This is the side, what we call the top. That's the bottom. It's white. He lives on the bottom of the ocean, bottom of the, the bay floors in a um, sandy areas, muddy areas, grassy areas. He's totally asymmetrical. Actually, this is a she. The, the females are much larger than the males. Um, she is asymmetrical, has two eyes on the top and uh, a pectoral fin right here and then a little dumpy pectoral fin down here. Um, the gut pockets right here. Real quick word of caution on flounder. They have absolutely razor sharp teeth. And I mean razor sharp teeth. You need to stay away from this side of them. Uh, they have like needle-like teeth. It, dead or alive, they are very vicious. I mean, if they brush up against you, they will cut you like razor blades. Okay. With that said, be careful of this side right here, even when they're dead. So, moving on. The flounder... When you go to fillet a flounder, if you really look at it, you get about four pieces of fish. You get four fillets versus a trout or a redfish or a drum, most other fish where you get two fillets. With the flounder, you get the, the shoulder off the top, the belly off the top, the shoulder off the bottom, and the belly off the bottom. The bottom or the white side fillets are normally thinner than the top side fillets. They taste the same. They look the same. Um, the really only thing that you can tell difference is that they're a little bit thinner than the top side fillets. And the other thing that you're going to need to know is that this right here, this guy, he's pretty fat. He, he was eating pretty good before he got, before he got harvested. Um, he's got a real fat belly pocket right here. There's a lateral line that runs this way. It's hard to see. He's brown and slimy. You can't really see it. So this is ribs and bones, but from here to here is all meat. But here, all the way to about right here, right at the backside of the gill, all the way to the top, what we call the shoulder or the hump, is all meat. Okay, It's the same on the white side. Um, what you're going to need for the easy style of filleting is a, a nice sharp fillet knife, something preferably in the 8 to 10 range. We use Dexter Russells. 
Dexter Russell knives have a thin width, uh, thin spine, and they are flexible. What you want is a, a filleting knife that will bend, that will flex. Okay. Because the first thing you're going to want to do is score the fish. Okay. What we mean by score the fish is we're going to cut the fish right here at the tail. Okay, you're not going to cut the tail all the way off. You're not going to cut through the spine. You're just going to cut through till you get to the spine. You're really just cutting the skin off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come at a 45 degree angle right behind the pectoral fin. We're going to lift it up out of the way. And we're going to lay the knife at about a 45 degree angle versus the lateral line or the spine. And what we're doing here is we're maximizing the meat up in this corner and we're going to cut out the gut pocket right here. So if we take the knife and then score the fish like that, you can see that there, there's his guts. We probably left a little gut pocket there. We can clean that out. Uh, we're going to score the fish like that, okay? From that point right there, the next step is to score the fish down the pectoral line, okay? We're going to take the knife and the only thing that really may require a little sawing when you're doing this is piercing through the scales, okay? Once you get through the scales, there's really no sawing required. Now there's some scales on my blade. I'm gonna gently, carefully take those off so that they, they don't block my edge from cutting, okay? If you're new to this, I would suggest starting on the belly side in case you mess up the fillet, you don't mess up your top shoulder side. This is the primo fillet. This is the big, the big dog uh, of the, the four fillets that you're going to take off the fish. This is the big piece. So if you haven't done this before, I would suggest starting on the belly side of the brown side. The white side's a little thinner. It could be tricky at times. So we're going to start on this fillet. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the knife. I don't know if you can hear that. It's kind of like what it's doing is that knife is running along the spine. Um, I'm not cutting through the head. I'm not cutting through the spine. I'm not cutting through the spine anywhere. I'm not penetrating the bones. I'm just penetrating the skin and the meat. From this point right here, what we're going to do is we're going to take the knife and we're going to put downward pressure, downward pressure where the knife is actually bending a little bit. We're going to get it in there and we're going to start separating this meat from the bone. So we can do it one of two ways. We can start back here, start getting it to come off. So I'm going to get the knife like in this groove down and then out. And when I come out, I want to put downward pressure on the skeleton. And I want to exit right where the skin meets these fins, okay? And you're going to work your way down the, the fish. And again, you're dealing with the fillet knife. And a fillet knife is basically a exaggerated length scalpel. So please be careful. Um, you can really cut the crap out of yourself with one of these things if you don't know what you're doing. Right here, side note, right here around this corner um, where the pectoral fin and the top of the ribs are, there's sometimes some little bones and you'll feel them as you cut through the fish. They'll want to catch right there. So, so now what I have is I have a clean shot to come across and take this off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up underneath here. I'm going to push down. And I'm pushing down. I don't know if you can see my blade bending. It It bends. I mean... I'm, gonna put, I'm putting good pressure. Now, I'm not putting pressure in downward angle where I'm going to bite into the bone. I'm not putting downward pressure in upward angle where I'm going to leave a bunch of meat on the bone. And as I lift that fillet up and out of the way, as you can see, I'm just separating the meat from the skeleton. Okay? Comes off like that. Nice. That's your that's your 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 uh your prize piece. That's your big piece right there. Really good piece of looking flounder right there. That uh, that'd be a, a meal for one person. 
Um, I don't think you'd get that much fish in a restaurant right there. So with that off, all the meat is off the top side of the fish. We're going to flip it over. We're going to score the underside. And when you score the underside, you got to remember when you flipped it over, uh, on, the, on the brown side, we scored it this way. On the white side, we got to score it this way because now here's the gut pocket and here's the shoulder. So you got to be mindful of the shoulder is now here and the gut pocket's over here. So we're going to move this little dumpy fin out of the way. And score the fish. Now if you look closely, you can actually see there's like this line and you'll see it on every one of them. The lateral line kind of takes this weird curve and then goes straight down. When we score the fish this way, we're not going to worry about this curve. We're just going to follow the line that goes straight this way. We're going to score the tail and then score down the center this way. If you do happen to catch a flounder waiting or something like that and you put him on a stringer and he's still alive and then you say you get back to the dock and you're going to, to fillet him out, it's very difficult to fillet a fish that has not been on ice. Uh, you can do it with trout, you can do it with redfish. Flounder is difficult. The meat is soft when it's, when it's not cold and fall, it, you'll tear the meat real bad when you go to, to fillet it. So uh, before you do any of this, remember you need to put it on ice. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get my thumb in here, I'm gonna try and peel away, I'm gonna peel back on this fillet as I bring the knife in and exit right where the skin meets these fins, that's going to maximize the throw on my fillet. That's going to give me the most meat. And you know, guys, you spend a lot of time and money going out, fishing, boats, gas, license. This is your prize. You know, you need to you need to respect the fish that you catch. Learn to fillet it properly. Learn to maximize the amount of meat that you get off these things. Um, now this flounder right here, it's late at night, it's kind of dark, but if you can see that flounder is pretty much transparent. Every pretty much edible piece of meat has been removed from this fish. It is no waste at all. Now the belly side pieces which be this piece and this piece. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to feel around where the gut pocket edge would have been. I can feel there's some bones right there. There's going to be some bones left over unless you're real, um, I don't know what you want to call it, conservative and you went far on your score. When you do that, you waste some meat. So what I do instead of wasting that meat, I can feel those bones right there. I'm going to come in this way I'm going to come down and out like kind of a scooping motion and I'm going to scoop those bones out and you can feel it now those are gone I was able to save as much of that meat as possible I can feel there's one right there you're running your finger across it you'll be able to feel it I can run that scoop out save every bit save every bit of meat so now I have clean good looking fillets I'm going to give you another little thing here. Um, these fillets have a natural separation. Okay. If you see right here, there's like a natural groove right there in the fillet. That's not from the knife. That's from the anatomy of the fish. This is the meat. This is the main muscle right here. Okay. This stuff right here, some guys call it the pulp, the fin meat. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the scientific term for it is. We call it the pulp. What this is, if I were to take my fillet knife and then fillet the skin off and have just the fillet, which you end up with, this stuff comes off. Okay. Uh, when it comes off, it breaks apart like uh, like grapefruit pulp. This is kind of what it looks like. I'm gonna I'm gonna de-skin this fish to show you my technique for de-skinning fish it breaks apart so you lose this little strip of meat the tenderloin uh the the chicken tenders of of the fillet you know this is the main breast right here and this is your chicken tenders uh you could save this stuff guys uh i i've used it to make when I've, we've had you know 20 30 flounder on the table and you got a bunch of of pulp left i take it i put it in a bowl uh, i'll blanch it uh, in some olive oil 
mix it with some panko and then uh, make crab cake, uh, like crab style cakes, it's flounder cakes out of it. And it's absolutely delicious. It is freaking phenomenal. When I take the fillets off the skeleton and I'm going to remove the meat from the skin, I always start at the skinny end. Why? Because if I start at the big end, I'm going to waste a little bit of it getting a pinch and, and scooping in on the meat. So I'm going to start back here. I take my index finger and I try and pin the piece of meat as best as I can. I put some downward pressure and I start with like a, a sharp angle and then I as I turn the knife flat. The goal here is to get a little piece of skin like that started that I can actually grab. Once I get this piece of skin that I can grab, I'm pushing down on the knife like this where it, it's a fine-tuned control and you got to practice with it where the edge of the knife isn't actually touching the table, but if I lift up this way just a little bit, there makes enough of a gap as I pull the fillet to the knife, the skin rides in that gap. So I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna not, not like this down, not like this up, not totally flat, but just a little bit of up pressure. Get enough where I can grab a hold of it and then I'm going to pull that fillet towards the knife. Here's some of that pulp we were talking about right there. And if you look at it, it's like, you see how it breaks into little pieces like pulp. I mean, that's what it looks like. That's what we call it that. But anyways, um, that fillet came off. That's a perfect flounder fillet. There's no bones. There's no skin. There's no garbage on there. Uh, that is pretty much transparent skin. There's no meat left on there. Uh, that's the way. That's the way it's supposed to be done. Uh, a lot of guys like to leave the skin on when I, if I'm going to freeze fish, I freeze it with the skin on. Why? If you're going to take the skin off, take the skin off right before you cook it. What you're going to do is you're going to protect at least one side of the fish from air. When I freezer pack this stuff, I take these two pieces, um, belly to belly meat. I put them like that. I freezer pack them like that. So I have skin that if it, there does get a little air in there, the skin is what's going to get exposed to the air. I'm going to take it off anyways when I before I cook it. Uh, stay tuned, guys. We're going to show you uh, the intermediate way, which is what we call book matching. Uh, we, we book out the flounder. It's a little different technique. Stay tuned. We'll show you the, the book method.